So it's going to be a two-parter, um, right? So the first part are the trade signals, right? The bloodhound part of it. And then tomorrow, we'll wrap it up with the Blackbird portion of it, all right? So there's, there's the Blackbird portion of it. So, um, so let's just kind of shrink the Blackbird part out of the way uh, since that's not necessary for today. All right, so this is a multi time frame um, swing indicator type of system, right? So I guess you know you could say a price action, you know, based on swing points um, type of system here, right? So we have a higher time frame, which is the 240 minute, and right, so HTF um, for short, and then we have a lower time frame, the four minute chart here. All right, so what you're looking at is the four minute chart here. Um, so it's it's pretty straightforward. So um, we're looking for the lower time frame, right, to synchronize with the higher time frame, as far as uh, you know, market trend direction, right? So when the higher time frame is in an uptrend, right, and so that's defined by higher lows, right, using the swing indicator. And this is Ninja's swing indicator, right? Not, not the swing highs and lows that's included with Bloodhound. Right? So we're using Ninja's swing indicator. And so, right, so we're looking for higher lows, right? And that's going to define an uptrend um, or, you know, vice versa for a downtrend, right, it would be lower highs. So once we get an uptrend started on the higher time frame, right, then the, the goal is to, you know, buy, go long, basically, on the first, right, so the first higher low on the lower time frame. So, right, that's, that's the goal there. There's one more piece uh, missing here. Right, so we have a, let's see here. So, so by the first higher low on the lower time frame, right, once the higher time frame enters the buy zone. And what's the buy zone? The, the buy zone on the higher time frame and the lower time frame are essentially the same, right? So, all right. So, um, so when we get an uptrend, right, which is higher lows has formed, and then, you were looking for the swing high to be broken, right? So we need, so we got two components, right? We got, we have, we need a higher low, but then also the swing high also has to be broken. So, right, on, on the higher time frame. So, right, so that, that's the two conditions that we're looking for is not just higher lows, right? So as we can see here, right, we have four higher lows. But we also need a break of the swing high as well. So right where my cursor's at, right, that break of the swing high, that's the second condition we're looking for. So, um, and then, right, so once we get a break of the swing high on the higher time frame, you know, and then, so then obviously we're only, so the higher time frame, right, is going to be in a, in a uptrend. Right. So then only, you know, long positions are taken on the lower time frame. And then, um, you know, just, just to clarify here. So, so for a long trade, right, we're going to take a, so again, this is going to be the Blackbird part of it. So a, a market entry order is going to be used, right, once a higher low is formed, and the current swing high is broken, right, on the lower time frame. So this is on the lower time frame, right? So we can see that basically we're looking for the duplicate, the same condition on the higher time frame as we are on the lower time frame, right? Higher lows and then a break of the swing high. All right, let's see. That's basically it. So um, it's not that complicated here. Now, the complicated part is 
understanding the swing indicator here. Yeah, and again, this is Ninja's swing indicator here. So maybe I should just put NT. So <clears throat> NT swing indicator. And I um, I have two indicators on my chart here to help explain the complications with the swing indicator, right? So uh, let's see, I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit. So you'll notice that um, there are two indicators on my chart here. So I have the swing indicator. So this is Ninja swing indicator. But then I also have a swing no backfill indicator as well. And so you're seeing both of those indicators on the chart, right? So the small dots here, that is Ninja swing indicator. And the larger dots is the swing no backfill indicator, All right? I might as well, let me open up my indicator list, All right? So we have the swing uh, no backfill and just the regular swing indicator. All right, oh, and the no, let's see, both swing indicators uh, should have a uh, strength of four. There we go, I corrected that. So the problem with the the uh, the normal swing indicator is that it back paints, right? So you know when you look at the swing indicator, right? It looks like you know it looks like it's able to predict when a swing high is going to form on that very same bar, but it doesn't, um, right? This the swing indicator requires as many bars as the strength. So, right, so for this system, we're using a, a, a strength of four, right? And so we can see that right up there. Can't get too close to it, but anyways, there you go. So there's a strength of four. So, right, so it requires the, the actual uh, swing point bar and then three, or I'm sorry, well, four additional bars afterwards. So one, two, three, and then when we get to the fourth bar, then the swing is actually identified, right? But the swing indicator paints on the chart as if it recognized, you know, exactly on which bar that swing point was going to occur. And that's because it, it back paints. And um, indicators that back paint can't properly be used in a system, right? Um, because so in order for, so let's say, we're at this point and, you know, so right now, nobody knows if that's gonna be the swing high or not. Not even an indicator knows that, right? Especially an indicator doesn't know that that's gonna be the swing high. And so for the swing indicator, right? One bar goes by and then two bars go by, three bars go by, and then the fourth bar goes by. And this, you know, by the time, so by the time we get to the fourth bar, that's when the swing indicator is able to identify that, yes, this in fact was a swing high. And then it backfills or back paints, you know, all the, the, the dots in there, right? And so this backfilling makes it um, very difficult to build systems with, um, you know, because you're, because historically, right? And remember, we're looking at historical data. So this is all historical data. So historically, you know, we're basically fed a lie about the indicator. And so when you're building a system, whether in Bloodhound or Ninja Strategy Builder, or if you're coding your own thing and you're using an indicator that back paints, um, you know, you, you get basically this false data here um, that, that shows up from the indicator that's back painting. So what I've done instead, instead um, so I'm gonna remove, oh yeah, and here's another thing. Um, you know, it's really hard to see, but if I click on the swing indicator, right? You can see all the little dots when you select an indicator. So the swing indicator plots all the way to here where my arrow is. And then of course the swing high drops down to this, to this swing high down here, right? So even, even prior 
swing highs and, and swing lows, even their plot is modified. So if you were to watch this in real time, yeah, if you watch this on a live data feed, right, the swing indicator, it actually plots all the way out to here, um, right, where the, the larger blue dots are. And then once this swing, the, once this, this other swing high is detected, then, ninja, then the indicator goes in, it backfills, and right? it backfills um, all these dots and it erases these dots. So it's, it's erasing historical data and it's backfilling historical data as well. So it's doing two big no-nos, you know, when you're trying to build a system. Um, right, it's modifying the historical data, you know, on two swing highs. So it's doing a double no-no. Um, so that's why I also have this swing no backfill. And so this is showing you what truly, um, uh, how the swing indicator truly works. So this is unmodified. So these plots are unmodified. So this is unmodified data. So you can see what the swing indicator is actually doing. And um, that is gonna make it just a hundred times simpler to build a system using an indicator that doesn't back paint, right? That doesn't modify the historical data. So, um, yeah. And so that's partially, yeah. So th that's why um, I was, uh, I got into the room late is I was trying to get this um, swing, no backfill indicator uploaded to a place where you guys can download it here. So let's um, pause right now and, and let me show you where you can find this indicator. So we used to have, uh, back in Ninja Trader 7, we also, uh, we also put out a, uh, a swing indicator that doesn't back paint either for Ninja Trader 7. And uh, we just never got around to doing it for Ninja Trader 8, uh, but, but because of this question, so we finally got around to doing that here. All right, so the, this swing no backfill indicator um, I was hoping it would show up in Ninja's app share here. So, but you have to go through a submission process. And let me just reload this chart again. And yeah, so it looks like Ninja hasn't gotten around to adding our submission to their app share here. So, but if you go to, so it, who knows how long it's going to take them, if it's maybe later on today or maybe next week, it might show up here. But it will show up in the Ninja Trader 8 indicators list. And if you sort by date added, then it'll show up on the top of the list here. All right. So as you can see, I already have Bloodhound on my chart. So I can just open up Bloodhound here using the empty template button on the top. And the first thing we want to do is put a file name in here. So let me hit the save as button and put in today's date. So it is the last day of March. And tomorrow is April Fool's Day. So be careful. All right, fair warning, everybody. Tomorrow's April Fool's Day. Um, okay, so now that we have a file, our file name in here, you know, all of our work will now get saved to the file. So next, I'm going to switch over to the logic tab. So we can start working on the logic board here. And um, let's see, I'm gonna hit the new button here to start a new logic template. And let's see, what should we call this? So this is a, a multi time frame swing trend signals, I guess. Yeah. So let's go back to um, back to our instructions here, right? So we need to build this basic swing trend, you know, direction filter and signal. So, right. So up. Uh, let's see. So a long trend, you know, as we already know, is is higher lows. So let's let's identify those higher lows, and then. Next, 
we will identify that's right i gotta keep scrolling down to actually the um to the blackbird instructions here so once we've identified those higher lows then we're going to look for the swing high to be broken so how do we identify when a higher low is created right well pretty simple the plot right the swing low plot steps higher right it goes from one bar so the previous bar to the current bar you know is a step higher so we can look at the swing lows stepping higher and then vice versa right for a downtrend everything's reversed so we look for the swing highs to step down All right so let's look at the swing lows right so we're using the swing lows for a long trend and using the swing highs for a downtrend right so kind of vice versa so so let's grab a comparison solver right because that's what we're doing we're so right we're looking at we're comparing the current swing low to the previous swing low right so let's connect that in there let's see here so we're looking for higher lows for a long lower highs for a short okay so i have higher lows lower highs swing trend um, as my name here input a is going to be this the swing indicator and in, input a is the swing indicator and input b is the swing indicator All right so let's put that in here um, all right, and again, we're using the swing no backfill um, version here. All right, so let's select that. And again, remember to adjust the strength there. So we're using a swing strength of four. All right, and we're using the swing low, right, for, for a long trend. Remember, yeah, we're using the swing lows stepping higher for a long trend. And so the swing highs are being used for identifying a short trend right so we have that selected all right we're going to do the same thing again for input b here all right adjust the swing strength and select the same plots again right so swing low is used for a long a long trend swing high for a short trend this time for input b we need to use the displacement because we want to look back one bar. So we're going to use a displacement of one to look back one bar, right? So input A with a displacement of zero, that's the current bar. And input B with a displacement of one, that's, right, that's the swing low one bar back, right? Or the swing high one bar back. And so we can already see instantly right there, right? We get a long signal when the swing low steps higher, right? Swing low steps higher. And if the swing highs step lower, we're getting a, a short signal, right? Swing highs step lower. Now, just a little uh, trick here. We'll get into this a little more later, but if we plug this into a toggle node, right? Now, basically we kind of created like a really simplified kind of mini, um, simplified mini kind of swing indicator, you know, trend um, output here, All right? So we can see on this up uptrend, right? As the swing lows are stepping higher, you know, we, we, we have this long output, right? Until the swing highs start stepping lower, right? So on and so forth. All right, so that is, um, so that's part one. Now we need to identify right these points right there when the swing high gets broken <clears throat> or vice versa when the swing low is broken. So how do we do that? Well, we can um, you know for the swing high, we can look at the high of the bar. And so if the high of the bar, let's back this up a little bit, right? So if the high of the bar, is higher than the swing high. And remember the swing high is, is one bar back. So we have to look 
one bar back again to get to the swing high. But essentially, right, if the if the high price is higher than the swing high, then we know that the swing high has been broken. So we're going to grab another comparison solver to do that. So uh, we're using the high price for a long uh, output or the low price for a short output. And we're comparing that to the swing high or low. All right, so th this time input A is the high or low price of the bar, right? So our, our our input type is going to be price. And so for a long, right? So for a long, we're using the high price of the bar. And for a short, we're using the low price of the bar. And for input B, again, that's our swing indicator. So there you go. There's our swing, no backfill. Adjust the strength to four. And let's see, this time we're using the swing high for a long signal, and we're using the swing low for a short signal, right? So our plot selection is opposite of what it was uh, in the other solver. So there we go. And also remember, so we do have to look back one bar in order to get that swing high plot, right? Because um, it stops. So if a swing high or swing low is broken, right? It stops plotting. So we have to look back one bar. So that means we need to use the displacement of one like so. And there we have it, right? So we have a, a short, let's see if I can grab that. There we go. So we have a short signal when the swing low is broken right? Swing low is broken here, short signal, and the swing high is broken here on a long signal, right? There we go. Now, so we're looking for both of these conditions together, right? We're, um, so we're looking for the, the um, higher lows and a break together. So we need an AND node here. Let's grab an AND node plug these in together and let's see what we get. So um, yeah, so so far so good. Look, so the swing highs are stepping down and then we get a break of the swing low, we get a short, right? Swing highs are stepping down, a break of the low and we get a short. Um, and same thing here. Um, higher lows, and then a break of the high, right? Uh, higher lows and a break of all these swing highs. Now, here we go. So look what happens here, right? So we have higher lows and then we get a break of the swing high, right? but we don't have a signal here. So what happened? Well, let's take a look here. Well, yeah, we get a higher low, and so we get a long output, but then we got a lower high. So it switched to a short output, right, for a downtrend. And then we got a higher low, so it switched to a long output for an uptrend. And then we got a lower high again, right? So as, as price is um, tightening up, right? Uh, so as price is consolidating here and tightening up, right? We're getting basically, you know, all of this choppy kind of back and forth of, you know, uptrend, downtrend, uptrend, downtrend. So we need to, um, uh, adjust our toggle node here so that it's not flip-flopping every single time, right? 
so um, right. So every time, yeah. So every time there's a, a higher low, right? It flip flops and then a lower high and it flip flops around. So we need the so from the toggle node, right? The toggle node when a higher low is created, we need the long output to stay on, right? So we need the long output to stay on here because we have a higher low and we still have higher low and we still have a higher low, right? So we need the long output to stay on this entire time, right? Until it's broken. Right, so once the swing low is broken, that is when we then want our long output to uh, turn off. And the same thing for the swing highs, right? So uh, the highs are moving lower, 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 lower until it's broken. So we'd want the same thing. So over here, right, we want the short output to stay on on and on until until it's broken right here right so on this bar we can see that swing high is broken and then um, eventually we have a higher high right there so i'll just kind of use my little rectangles here to kind of show what we actually are looking for so that means we have to go into the toggle node and instead of using right just the input, because right now the input, right? We only have one solver going into the input. And so the in input is flip-flopping the toggle node from short to long to short to long, right? One only. So when we get an opposite signal, you know, we don't actually want the an opposite signal going to the input to do anything. We're gonna need to use the reset and and we uh, see, yeah, we just happen to have something that provides the reset signals. So, right, so we're looking at our swing high and swing lows being broken here. So looking at our, you know, our rectangle here, right? When do we want our long output to turn off? Remember that's supposed to be our long output there. And let's see here, let's adjust that. There we go. All right. So we want our long output to turn off when the swing low is broken. Well, and we can see we get a short signal, right? We get a short signal from, from this solver here when the swing low is broken. And when the swing high is broken, you know, so we can see the little uh, ellipses right there and right there, we're getting a long signal when the swing highs are broken from this guy. So we can connect this into the reset there. And let's connect the toggle node back up. And so this time we're using an opposite signal on the reset to turn the output off. And there we have it. So look, our, our outputs actually match my rectangles perfectly this time. And so, yeah, so if we look back here, right, the lows are moving higher, moving higher, moving higher, and then the swing low is broken. And so the long output turns off. So there we have it. So we fixed basically our um, higher low and lower high trend um, uh, output there. So let's see, and let's rename this toggle node here. So, so this is looking at for lower highs and I'm sorry, higher lows and then lower highs trend. All right, so remember I had the circle here um, identifying 
you know, a place where we expected to see uh, a signal from this AND node. So let's take a look at the AND node now. And there we go. There we have it. So a swing high is broken and a swing high is broken. And yeah, so our, our swing highs are stepping lower. And then when we get a swing low broken, right, we have a swing low broken here, swing low broken here, and there we go. All right, so that is essentially, you know, what we're looking for um, is these points here, uh, which is setting the, the, the swing trend direction. So now we need to apply this to both time frames, right? So right now, right, we've only been working on the four minute time frame here. So we also want to apply this to the higher time frame, right? So I have the same thing going on over here on a 240 minute chart. So let's build this on the higher time frame here. So what I'm going to do is switch over to the solvers tab. And then we're going to add that 240 minute chart. So I'm going to use the chart button here, right? And that's going to add another chart time frame here. Let's make this a 240 minute. There we go. And then I need to make um, copies of these solvers here. So let's make a copy and then move it down onto the 240 minute chart. Okay. So I need to make a copy of this solver, make a copy and then select it and then move it down onto the higher time frame. All right, so there we go. So we have duplicates of these solvers, you know, one running on the lower time frame and and one running on the higher time frame. Okay, so now let's switch back over to the logic board. And now we can go to our uh, existing nodes. And we can see we have a default time frame, uh, right, which is the lower time frame. That's the four minute chart. And then we have the higher time frame, the 240 minute chart. So let's drop these on here. So again, existing nodes, the 240 minute higher time frame, and then I need to drop this on there. So <clears throat> and I need another toggle node. So I'm gonna set this up, you know, the same as how we have it down here. So let's see. So this toggle node, right? If you remember for the for the input. Uh, on opposite signal is no action, but then on the reset, we have force off. So, so for this toggle node, um, the on opposite signal, it's gonna be no action. And then for the reset on opposite signal is force off. And then we need a AND node. So connect that in like so. Just tighten that up a little bit. So this is right the higher time frame. That and I can I can um, put a name on this AND node. I can just call it the lower time frame, like so. All right. So let's look at the the higher time frame signals coming coming in here. Oh, and before we get going too far. You know, remember Bloodhound's telling us that we added a right another chart time frame, so we need to reload Ninja Trader to get that 240 minute chart time frame loaded into Bloodhound. So let's let's do a quick reload, and there we have it. Okay, uh, I guess first let's let's see. Yeah, so it looks like we should have a signal. Oh, let's see. No, our yeah, things that one doesn't actually work work out. Let's look at this. So, um, you know, this actually points out another huge problem with using indicators that back paint, right? Because we know 
that this is the swing high, right? And so the normal swing indicator, right? It would have dots, right? Its plot would go all the way back here. And same thing over here, right? It'd go from there to there. But then, right, those dots would disappear, right? Those dots would be deleted and they would be moved down here, right? So when we look at our chart, it would look like, oh, this swing high stepped down way back here, um, right? Way back here. So yeah, it would look like the swing high stepped down, right? Back here. And then we get, right, this swing low is broken right here afterwards, right? So the normal swing indicator that's back painting would feed us basically an illusionary lie because it would make it look like, oh yeah, the swing high is stepped down and then the swing low is broken. But since we're using a swing indicator that doesn't modify the historical data, we can actually see that in fact, the swing highs didn't step down until after the swing low was broken, right? So that's another thing about, you know, so here's kind of a secondary, you know, um, benefit of using indicators that don't back paint, right? So the swing indicator would, would mislead you into thinking that, oh, we should have a signal here. But, you know, in fact, you don't because the swing high did not step down until we got, right, until we, until we got to this bar, right, which is one bar after that swing low is broken. So, so let's see here, do we, do we have, no, we don't have a swing low that was broken yet. Um, all right, so there's no, signal there. All right, so it looks like the soonest signal that we get is going to be right here. So we have the lows moving higher, and then we get a break. All right, so there we go. There's our, our break of the swing high. So we're going to have to go back quite a ways. That's, oh, there it is right there. Right. Yeah, so there is that higher time frame uptrend um, signal, right? So you can see my crosshairs are are synchronized there. So I do have my global crosshairs turned on. So so there is the um, uptrend identified on the higher time frame here. So now what we need to do, right, is we need this we need this um, Trend direction to yeah to stay on so right so this is our higher time frame trend signals coming out but we need to hold on to that um, so we need another toggle node there we need to hold on to it like so. Let's see, I guess, um, hmm. yeah, so we don't have any instructions here on what to do in this situation here. Yeah, there's nothing telling us what to do here for this. Um, so on the higher time frame, all right, we, we do have a lower high, but the, the swing low is broken before that, um, you know, Mm -hmm. So it makes sense here that somewhere around here, the higher time frame uptrend is broken. So we could just go with a simple solution here of, you know, if the swing low is broken, then then we kill, you know, basically the uptrend on the higher time frame. You know, that would be a that would be a simple solution right there. So I guess we'll just kind of go with that for now. Um, so, yeah, so we could take, let's see, we could take the signals from here 
and feed it into the reset of this toggle node here. So let's see, that's going to be a uh, short. Yeah. So, so what we can do is use the, the signals from the swing low, you know, or the swing high being broken and use that to turn the toggle node off. Right, so that's what I got here. So, right, so we're using the reset on opposite signal to turn the toggle node off. So let's take a look and see what we get. Um, yeah, so if we shrink this up, yeah, so it just so happens this uptrend is identified, yeah, where my uh, white vertical line is here. Yeah, so we have higher lows, but we don't have a break, but the break of the swing high was way back here before the higher lows even started. Um, yeah, so we just had some really kind of crazy price action there. So yeah, so this uptrend was identified a little late, but and it correlates on our lower time frame chart. And then, so we stay in this uptrend and then this higher time frame uptrend. So that's what we're seeing, right? On the four minute chart, we're looking at the higher time frame um, trend direction. And then it gets turned off when the swing low is broken here. All right, so we'll you know, put that right there. So that swing low is broken and then we turn off the higher time frame trend. So I guess now yeah, that's one one simple solution there. You know, or you could turn it off, you know, even sooner if you wanted to. You could turn off the higher time frame trend when a lower high is made. Right. So if we wanted to do that, so remember this, this is identifying the higher lows or lower highs. So if we wanted to do that, right, we could disconnect that and we could take this and feed it in there. And I think this time, so yeah, okay. Yep, that's all we had to do. So now we can see the higher time frame trend turns off later, one bar later, actually. Yeah, one bar later. So, um, yeah. So basically when this swing highs step down, there we go. So the higher time frame trend is turning off. So, you know, um, just, I guess, depends on how you wanna, you know, slice and dice this thing here. Um, or even another option is we can take an OR node and we could put both of these in here and then use either, right, the higher highs or a break of the low, either one, whichever comes first. And we could use that to turn off our toggle node, right? So you can mix, mix and match this thing kind of any way you want. So this is probably the most conservative approach right, using either or, you know, whichever, whichever comes first, right, a break of the lows or a lower high, right, whichever one comes first would then turn the toggle node off for the higher time frame. So, um, so we'll name that toggle node there, call it the higher time frame trend. So let's see. Yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll leave it on the conservative uh, approach there. So I'll just leave it like that. All right. So we have a high time frame trend filter, and now we just need to connect it up with the signals on the lower time frame. Let's get back to this. All right. So here's all these signals from the lower time frame. So last, the last 
step here is I can just take the higher time frame trend, connect it into the last AND node, and there we have it. Let's see, I did have a whole bunch of signals on here. Right, if I disconnect the higher time frame, right, we can see we, I, we get all these signals here, a whole bunch of shorts and then a whole bunch of longs. But then they all get filtered out uh, when we use the higher time frame trend. So let's see if we do actually get some signals here. Ah, here we go. So here's a long signal, right? So there we go. So we do have a higher low and then a break of the high. Right. And let's see, where does that match up on our higher time frame? Okay, yeah, so we can see my crosshair on the um, higher time frame. Yep, and the higher time frame is still in an uptrend. So, okay, yeah, that looks good. All right, here's a bunch more long signals. So if we look at my crosshair, yeah, all these long signals are occurring all within these, you know, these couple of bars here on the higher time frame. All right, well, I think I think we have it. Um, Let's just, let me take another quick look and see. Yeah, at first I was thinking that we might need an exit signal or maybe not an exit signal, but a trailing signal for the trailing stop loss here. So, you know, looking at what's gonna happen tomorrow. So the initial, um, so the initial stop loss Right, is set at the swing low. Uh, right, makes sense. Um, and then we're trailing that stop loss just by simply following, you know, the the current swing low. Yeah, so that's just a consistent uh, trailing stop loss. So I don't, yeah, I don't see a need for any kind of a exit signal or a signal to activate the the trailing stop loss yeah uh, pretty yeah pretty basics there so let's see we do also yeah i, I uh, forgot about this but ken did send in some screenshots here to help illustrate you know to provide some examples here um you know in context of a chart um, which is kind of helpful here so yeah let's if we kind of walk through this here right so we have a bunch of higher lows, right? So we're only looking for long positions. Um, and let's see, oh, well, yeah, this is on the lower time frame. I mean, this is on the lower time frame. Let's see here. Yeah, here we go. So over here, yeah, so over here, so there definitely would be some, some long trades going along here, so, right? So a whole bunch of them probably, or, uh, Actually, probably, yeah, the, the first long entry would have been right here, right? So here we go. So we have a bunch of um, higher lows. And then, so once we get the higher lows, so you got to remember that this, this higher low wasn't detected until two bars after this swing high was broken, right? So this swing high was broken two bars before the swing low is detected. So again, that's that's the problem with using the swing indicator, right? The ninja swing indicator is that it lies to you, right? It, it looks like, oh, this swing low was identified immediately. So yeah, we got a, a higher low before the swing high was broken, but no, this, this low point was not detected until three bars after the swing high was broken. So, right, this, this higher, higher low came in three bars too late. So we had to then wait for this swing high to be broken. So this is where we're in a long, long position. And then we do have a lower high, but 
the none of these swing lows was broken, right? So the stop loss is sitting on these swing lows, but none of them are broken. So that long position is still open, right? Stop loss is moving up, moving up. Then we do get a lower high, um, which really doesn't factor into this, but what, what does factor is that this swing low is identified. And so the stop loss moves up um, and then that stop loss is hit. So we can see here, it says long covered, right? So our, our stop loss is hit. So we're out of that long position. Um, and then it says long re-entered. However, we don't have a higher low. We have a lower low, not a higher low. So this long re-entered looks incorrect. Yeah, according to those simple instructions, um, this long re-entry, I don't see one around here. It looks like we don't get one until way over here. So we do have higher lows, and then we finally get a high broken. And so we're back in the trade way, way back over here. So, all right. Yeah, I think that does it.